Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm just making sure I'm not on mute. Okay, perfect. So welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us for uh, Two Minute Stress Relievers. We are so pleased to have so many listeners calling in today. I am Karina Garnis from the UNH Office of Alumni Relations, and I am joined today by Don Zitney, who will be sharing some useful strategies on understanding and coping with stress. Don earned a master's degree in education and counseling from UNH in 2008, and she is a certified wellness coach um, and has been working at health and wellness at UNH since 2004. Dawn will be sharing a lot of great information and stress relieving techniques with us today. I would like to encourage you to just listen, to practice the techniques as we go, and don't worry about taking notes. We will be sending a follow-up email with her presentation, resources, and links afterwards. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box that you'll find at the bottom of your screen and Don will respond to questions at the end of the presentation. So with that, I will turn it over to Don. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I wish I um, could see you all, but I'm getting used to this new virtual reality, kind of like all of you. So I know you're out there and I'm very grateful to have you all take the initiative and put in the effort to take care of yourselves today. Sometimes just the idea of taking care of ourselves in the midst of everything we're um, coping with, that could even seem challenging, but this is exactly where you need to be, and this is exactly where I need to be. So I'm happy to see all of you. Um, so thank you for that wonderful introduction too. What we're gonna do today is everything that was just described to you. My style is not to um, lecture a lot, but to actually practice. So instead of me telling you about two minute stress relievers, we're gonna actually be practicing them. And so I encourage you in the comfort of your own home, if you have family members who wanna join you, um, it's appropriate for all age levels. Um, I won't say anything inappropriate, at least I don't think so. Um, so have your family join you and definitely try these practices out. You came here for a reason. And so let's use our hour together just for you. The emails will be waiting for you afterwards. All the tasks you need to do will be waiting for you. So this moment's just about you. Part of my work at Health and Wellness too is talking to students about wellness and self-care and, and doing that in a way that motivates students to want to make change. And so we do that by providing education, raising personal awareness, and um, doing some experiential things, trying things out, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And that's exactly the, the theoretical grounding that I have planned today for. So with that being said, this is health and wellness. I don't know how many of you have been on campus lately, but this is the main medical facility on, at um, UNH Durham. We're right behind the Paul College. UNH students like to say we're right across the street from Subway. So when I say we're a full medical facility, we definitely are. We have a pharmacy, we do lab testing, we have a radiology department, we have physicians, nurse practitioners. <clears throat> um, and then I work in our Living Well office, and our Living Well office is really about health promotion and prevention. And so doing a lot of education on campus around stress, wellness, sleep, sex, nutrition, alcohol, other drugs, all the things related to health and wellness. We are actually, most of us are working from home. We've implemented telehealth to the UNH community and there is a small number of staff who are still at health and wellness on the campus because we have about 150 students still on campus and our commitment is always to providing care to students. And so I think it's really important. I want you all to know who we are because I love health and wellness. That's why I've been here since 2004. So anytime I get a chance to share the good work we do, I always take a moment to do that. So here I am, just like all of you, um, I am coping with staying home. I will say that I love being home, and so in a lot of ways, I've considered this time to be a huge gift to me, but it's also been challenging, and so it's not an either or. It's been good or bad. It's been a little bit of both. I get to spend more time with my cat, which is good, and she's actually in that same spot right now as I am too, and hopefully she stays sleeping. <laughs> 
uh, we tend to have a full house here with my partner and his daughter sometimes here. And so we've all been delegated to different office spaces and mine happens to be in the kitchen. And so it's really been a challenging time, sometimes setting up boundaries and um, yeah, that's really important. And Shannon will be talking, if you're all doing our webinar tomorrow, we'll talk about that as well. So my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And like um, was said, I'm a wellness educator counselor at UNH. So to get us started, I thought, um, let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> and by that, let's just take a moment to get grounded, get grounded in this moment. And so let's just pause. I need a little bit of a pause too. I've been really excited to spend my afternoon with you for the last, for the next hour. So when we take a moment of pause, wherever you're sitting or laying down, I want you to notice your body sitting, to sit and know you're sitting. Noticing what it feels like to be supported by the earth. to be supported by your chair. Knowing you're sitting right here, right now. And just taking a few breaths, you've already been taking breaths, but just turning your attention now to your breathing Notice your breath in different ways in your body. We all experience our breath in different ways. We feel it maybe in our belly or our chest. And just like your feet, the chair, the earth is grounding you to this moment, your breath is anchoring you to this moment. So to know you're sitting, know you're breathing, right here, right now, and this is exactly where you need to be. If you want to take a deep breath, I think I need a deep breath. <laughs> So we've arrived. I've arrived. You've arrived. We're all here. So let's continue. That was one of our stress relievers, believe it or not, grounding ourselves to the moments. I felt like in that moment I needed to ground myself because even though I love doing this presentation, I want to do well. And so I tend to get a little anxious, worried. <laughs> my heart rate goes up. My breathing gets a little erratic. So I definitely notice the physiological change in my own body. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to connect our mind and our body. But before I go into what I'm going to do, I want you all to use the chat box to tell me what it was that motivated you to attend this session. There must have been something that when you got this email out of all your emails that said, huh, I need to do that. And if you wouldn't mind putting that in the chat box for me. Yeah, something quick to help feel better. Yes. Feeling stress without a schedule. Consistency is so important. Needing more time to relax, feeling overloaded. Yes. Coping with kids, being unhappy, not seeing their friends. Oh yes, we had one of those in our house. <laughs> yeah, feeling physical pain in our bodies. Stress definitely manifests in our bodies. Yeah, forgetting to take time to relax. Yes, there's something about this moment where, yeah, it's hard to kind of stop the vibration. Yeah, man, stress, stress, learning how to relax. Curious, good. Curious is my favorite word. <laughs> we need to get curious about our bodies too. Yeah, so, so many things. And as you all look at the chat, you could see some commonalities that we all have. I share a lot of these things with you. And I think that's one thing about coping with stress is we recognize this common humanity that we share with one another. And especially now in our wildcat family, and um, our communities and wider, our country and the world, we're all experiencing this loneliness, absolutely. 
you know, so many people are feeling a sense of loneliness. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, eating. <laughs> yes. Nice to see you, Kevin. Yeah, all right. I could spend my whole time reading these um, and I'm gonna go back and read them. So I wanna thank you all for sharing that with me and sharing that with one another. So I think sometimes it's important to, just like we take a pause to notice our breath and our body, it's important to take a pause and ask what our intention is. We do that when we eat, we do that when we work, we do that maybe when we're commuting, communicating with someone, what's my intention? And so you all arrived here, I changed the word on the slide to motivation, but you all arrived here with an intention from what I'm reading and seeing to care for yourself and to calm yourself, to soothe yourself. And that's what I'm hoping we could do a little bit today. Um, I'm gonna do this now because if I wait to the end, it won't happen. <laughs> so we have lots of other things happening. We do a daily recharge on our Facebook page. It's usually a meditation or some kind of soothing technique. And then our wellness Zooms have been so popular that we've added a lot more. And these are open to you all as well. So I know the alumni organization is doing so many great webinars. I've actually signed up for several of them. Um, but if you like this webinar, you want more, we offer these. You can go on our website, register. They're all free, OK? So let's talk about stress a little bit. Let me just move my my video picture of myself is blocking my screen <laughs> okay um so this is the thing folks we all experience stress it's not something we could avoid but what we're taught is that way to cope with stress is to avoid stress to you know try to jump over it but really the only way to cope with stress is to go through it what we often tell students, and I'm telling you all now, and I'm reminding myself, and this is how we're gonna frame our whole conversation today, is that I want you all experiencing stress. Stress is what gives our lives meaning. I don't know about all of you, but I've been incredibly stressed, but I've also felt this incredible sense of meaning that has really risen to the top for me. And so what research finds is that usually the things we stress about are things we care about. There's something at stake, and so, the idea is to not avoid stress, but to get better at stress. And that's really what my job is at UNH. It's really my mission in my own life and my work at UNH and with all of you is to help us recognize that it's okay to feel stressed and stress can manifest itself in many ways. We use different words to talk about our stress, um, but it's then what, how we sit with ourselves and what we choose to do with that information about happening with our stress response. And so that's what we're going to do today, talk a little bit more about stress. Um, I was thinking about, you know, how many of you are feeling fatigued lately, just really tired? Yeah. And a lot of times we think that maybe fatigue comes from, oh, I didn't sleep enough. Maybe I need to eat more food for energy. Maybe I need to move my body more. And that definitely happens. Those things can help us with fatigue, but really the kind of fatigue you and I are all experiencing right now that's wiping us out and depleting our energy. So when I talk about stress, a lot of it's like, what do I have energy for and what do I not have energy for? And so what's depleting our energy and causing most of us stress is an increase in intense emotions. Um, this need to have self-control. <laughs> so we're out of control of a lot of things in our lives. And so especially now, we may be seeking to really control what we can control. And unfortunately in our culture, we're kind of taught that we get the job done no matter what. But that doesn't always work when we are trying to cope with challenging situations. And then we could be experiencing fatigue also from an increasing intensity of negative thoughts. Fatigue is rarely research finds um, because of physical exhaustion, feeling tired in our body, it's more a mental state. So fatigue, depletion of energy is more about what's going on psychologically and mentally. And energy levels are determined a lot by our mind. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit more too. Um, so yeah, so let's do this. So this is the part of education I told you all about, that I'm gonna educate you. I think it's really important to understand what happens in our bodies when we're under stress. Because your mind, your body, your spirit, it's all one being. 
And so you, we all have a central nervous system. And this slide could be, I actually love this slide, but it may be a little overwhelming for you. So let me walk you through it. Let's start on the side where it says arousing. Um, hold on one sec. I'm like multitasking over here, so let's see. But I know you'll all be kind to me and it'll be okay. <laughs> okay, so what happens is when our body is under stress, we have hormonal changes and physiological changes in our body as a response. And that really occurs in our central nervous system. And we could have an arousing response and a calming response. And so if we start on the arousing side, we see that that's our sympathetic nervous system. This is usually what's commonly known as our flight or fight response. Many of us, when we talk about that increase in intense emotions, a lot of that has probably been around worry, um, anxiousness, whatever word we choose, maybe a little bit of fear, all those things put us into an arousing response where our senses are really heightened and that our goal in that moment, whether our body you know, recognizes it's helpful or not in that moment, it really goes into survival. And so when we feel this arousing response, this is when we feel our heart beating a little bit more, maybe we get sweaty, maybe we get a tummy ache, we really feel this a lot in our body. And the arousing part of our central nervous system can actually, it's not always bad. Like think about, you know, a job interview you've all gone to. You were probably aroused in some way. <laughs> and by aroused, I mean, you, you felt more activity in your body. You wanted to do well. And you needed the energy that we get from the arousal, the sympathetic nervous system response to show up and do our best. And so when we talk about um, the sympathetic nervous system, the arousing response, it's not, again, about being bad or good. This happens. Unfortunately, what's happening for all of us lately is that um, we've kind of maybe for some of us been stuck in this sympathetic response where we're continually at an activated state and it's hard to kind of bring ourselves down and bring ourselves calm. And this activated state could happen by things that happen around us externally, watching the news, or even internally. I could have a thought, and I, we could do an exercise now where I could have you all think about something and that we could activate each side of your nervous system. And so it really is your body's way of protecting you. It was really helpful when we were cavemen and women and we were living out in, out in nature and we really needed to be hyper alert to dangers. Our brain's always scanning the environment for dangers and we need to be able to jump into that fight, flight, or freeze response immediately. In our current culture, the way we've evolved, not culture, but the way we've evolved as human beings, our body still has this mechanism built in, but it's not always helpful because sometimes we get activated and we immediately have a response that's based in fight, flight, fear, okay? So then if we go to the other side, and this is what we're gonna spend some time really tapping into your parasympathetic nervous system. So this is your calming sense of nervous system. This usually happens when you feel at ease, um, you feel calm, of course. Maybe when you're connecting with someone you really care about and it feels good to have that connection. This is where we physically feel a relaxation in our body. So with that grounding exercise at the beginning, hopefully it tapped in a tiny bit into your parasympathetic where your breathing came down a little bit, your awareness expanded more. It wasn't so focused on what's in front of you and you feel the sense of emotional calm. And when we're in this place, we aren't so much focused on survival, we're focused on flexibility, curiosity. Um, it's just a whole other way of being in the world. And then the idea is by this um, chart, is I kind of think of the central nervous system as water. When we go to take a shower, we want a little hot water, a little rousing water. <laughs> we want a little cool water, a little calming water, and we need to find that sweet spot of warm water, a little bit in between. And then maybe, you know, if we're feeling really hot, you know, turn up the cool water a little bit more. Or maybe because it's been really cold lately, we're in the shower and we want a really warm, hot shower, then we turn up the arousing side. And that's how our body is, that sometimes we need to turn up our sympathetic nervous system, probably not a lot, it will do it on its own. <laughs> and a lot of times we need to turn it down and that's when we tap into our calming response. And so on the arousing response, that's our stress response that's built into your body. The amazing thing is the other side, the calming response, 
is your relaxation response, and that's also built into your body. And sometimes to get a healthy nervous system and find that continual state of balance, sometimes it's activating the arousal and then activating the calming. And so balancing between the two. And this image, the only thing I don't like about it is that it's perfectly in alignment. And there's no such thing as perfection. Sometimes our goal of striving, not sometimes, but always our goal of striving for perfection can really put us into a stress response. And so it's okay if you're not completely in balance. I think we're all a little out of balance lately. All right. So there's our central nervous system. I think this is really important understanding what's going on in your body. And so remember, stress isn't always a bad thing. It has meaning for us. But let's talk a little bit more about stress. Um, there's positive stress. These are short, stressful events, like going on a job interview, taking an exam, starting college. These are the stressful events that prepare you for the future. They build resilience. Actually, most of these stressors build resilience that's built into our bodies already. And then there's tolerable stress. I'd say most of us are probably in tolerable stress, not all of us, because I don't know all your situations, but tolerable stress is tragic, unavoidable events. And this was a tragic, unavoidable event. <laughs> I don't know if we could have avoided it in any way. Um, that's for another webinar, but here we are. And we look at all the, the tragedy around us and in us, and we know that these events are gonna have a meaningful impact on our life. And that right now we really need supportive networks and self-care. And this was the case before COVID-19 with tolerable stress, and it will be the case after. So toxic stress, when we move into this, this is ongoing repeated exposure to stressful situations. We could even put trauma over here, although all three types, of, you know, if you tend to have positive stress, that doesn't mean you've never experienced trauma. Um, but when we are in toxic stress, it means we've really had ongoing repeated exposure to stressful situations. Um, this could lead to future mental health and wellness difficulties. And for some of us, yeah, growing up in homes that were not safe, growing up in environments that were not safe, where maybe we didn't have our basic needs met of you know, food, shelter, and um, healthcare, <laughs> that could put us into toxic stress. So what we see happen with our stress hormones is that when we have positive stress, we see a spike in our stress hormones. But as you can see, it quickly goes down to our baseline state. It doesn't stay up there very long. When we have tolerable stress, the spikes tend to stay up a little bit longer and it takes a little bit longer to get to our baseline. So how many of you have experienced that lately? Where it's taking you a little bit longer to feel calm than it used to. And then maybe it's a brief moment and then you kind of feel that tension again. And then as we see in toxic stress, the stress hormones go up, but they never really come down to a baseline state. I think this is really important to recognize what's going on in your body because it helps just expand your own awareness about yourself, what's going on internally, and how it's connected to the external. So positive, tolerable, and toxic stress. All right. And believe it or not, this is one of our two minute <laughs> stress relievers. <laughs> it may not look like it because it looks like a lot on the screen. But Carol Dweck out of Stanford University um, has done a ton of research about growth mindset. And researchers in stress have really expanded that to talk about what's our mindset towards stress. And the whole idea with mindset is how our mind perceives things can have a great impact on how we're able to cope or how successful we are. And so if we have a closed mind, mindset, then maybe we start the day, you know, oh, it's another day, I'm gonna have another shitty day, then yeah, that's kind of a closed mindset. And most likely if you wake up with that mindset and that's how you start your day with that intention, it probably will happen that way. And so the idea of coping with stress is that we start to remember we start to recognize that stress has meaning and that we could really grow from our stress. So when we look at stress as being good and I could utilize it, like I think of all of you who are really coping with stress in your homes and you're, maybe you're cooking new recipes. Maybe you're connecting with people in ways you never have. Well, maybe you're experiencing new things that you never experienced that you kind of want to keep with you after we're able to stop physically distancing. 
Yeah, that means this is good stress in a lot of ways. <laughs> You're improving your health and vitality, um, vitality by recognizing that stress is good. You're trying new things out. It enhances your performance and productivity. And so when we look at stress as being good, it gives us that motivation. In my work, motivation is everything. Do we have motivation not only to face our day, but to set goals and work towards them? It facilitates growth and learning. When we're kind of put in these challenging situations and we're like, okay, you know, this is gonna be hard, but I'm gonna do it. We have this sense of growth, we have this sense of confidence, and we're learning in that moment. It's this edge where we're just at the edge where we're learning, but we aren't going over. And it contributes to personal growth. I can guarantee all of you are having an intense amount of personal growth right now, whether or not you realize it, because right now we're all using resilience. You are all being so resilient right now. Even to be able to get out of bed and show up to this webinar, beautiful, that's resilience. And the more we learn that stress is good, we turn towards stress, not away from it, and we learn to cope with stress. If we have a mindset where stress is all bad, it's really gonna deplete our energy. It depletes our health, our immune system, get a little funky. <laughs> um, we, don't, we aren't motivated, we procrastinate, we don't really wanna do much. We aren't really learning or growing because we aren't turning towards what's difficult. And when we don't turn towards what's difficult, sometimes it gets bigger. <laughs> and when we turn away, it really prohibits personal growth. And then at this point, we aren't so much coping with stress, but we're trying to manage stress. And so we do that sometimes by taking it out on our bodies, overeating, undereating, overexercising, underexercising, sleeping too much, sleeping too little. We really hard on our bodies. Um, and so the idea with a stress mindset and having it be a two minute stress reliever is the next time you all feel this sense of stress, I want you to pause and recognize like, oh, yeah, there's that sense of stress. <laughs> and then maybe be curious, what am I stressed about? And then maybe ask yourself, what can I do to help myself? What can I do to help myself? And that is the goal with coping with stress. We want to help ourselves. We want to be our own best friend. We don't want to work against ourselves. And that's when coping becomes much differently than managing stress. And if you all want to learn more about that, not to be like an infomercial, but Shannon's going to talk a lot about wellness on our webinar tomorrow with the alumni organization. And I encourage you all, um, if you haven't registered, to definitely register with her to do that. So there's one of your two minute stress relievers. I'm gonna leave that one for you all to practice on your own. <laughs> um, I'm gonna skip that slide. So let's get into, let's get into it. But if you wouldn't mind, let me just see if there's anything else I wanna say. Um, I have like so much I wanna say to you all and it all won't fit in an hour. So I need to be a little bit more flexible with myself. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's get to work. And to work, I mean like gentle, calming work. <laughs> I shouldn't have used the word work. Okay, but these, what I want you all to know is that these are two minute stress relievers that I don't just sit around thinking about while I'm taking bubble baths. <laughs> they're, um, they're really evidence-based. Everything we do in health and wellness is really, is always based on science. It's based on best practice. And these techniques are to give us a little bit of space between stimulus and response. And so we're all having a lot of stimulus happening right now in our brain, internally, externally. And sometimes when we don't give us tools that space, we tend to react instead of responding. And so these are all techniques where we could make space in our brain, our mind, and our body to decide how we want to respond, how we want to move forward after we do each technique. So what I will say to you all that I also say to students is that um, we all need a self-care toolkit. And some of the tools we pull out will work some days and some days they won't. And there may be things we practice in the next half hour together where you're like, yeah, I really liked that. Or you're like, no, I don't really like that. Even after practicing it today, and you're going to have it in your toolkit, you never know, you may turn to it at some time. And so the thing about stress and wellness, too, is we can't expect to replicate how we felt a minute ago or yesterday. 
So what works for us today may not work for us tomorrow. And that's where we remember to be flexible, curious, non-judgmental with ourselves, okay? So let's start with our first technique. And I really am gonna try to stick to two minutes with all of them and we'll see how far we get. So this one is one that we use a lot. And if any of you have been to therapy, I'm sure your therapist has used it with you. If you've never been to therapy, I'm putting a plug in for therapy right now. <laughs> it's a good way to learn about yourself. So I'm gonna walk you through this. I want you to, um, yeah, if you're not fully present, let's get a little bit more present. I like getting present, I just did it, whether you all saw me or not. I sit up in my chair, put my feet somewhere stable. I find a little bit of um, openness in the front of my body, a little bit of alertness in my back. So finding a little bit of balance. And you don't need to look at the computer screen to do this one. I'm gonna walk it through you. I'm gonna walk you through it. So in your head, I want you all to look around the room and quickly, without any other content, name five things that you see. Four things that you could touch. So maybe you feel your, your body on your chair, you touch your shirt, and four things you could touch. Three things you could hear. It's the sound of my voice, the noises in your home. Two things you could smell. This one, you may need to smell your shirt, things around you. Two things you could smell. And then the last one, one thing you could taste. What you taste in your mouth. And there we have the five, four, three, two on grounding exercise. I don't know about all of you, but I feel, again, a little bit more calm. <laughs> and this is something you could take with you. Actually, all these experiences you could take with you, they don't require you to buy anything because you have all these things with you. You have your five senses, for most of us have all of our five senses. And so anytime you feel yourself on a little bit of shaky ground, whatever that looks like for you, I want you to remember your five senses. Even if you don't remember, like, do I do five things I touch, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Even if you just look around and continually name the things you see, um, touch, hear, smell, or taste, that will really ground you to this moment. And that's what we're trying to do. When we try to calm ourselves, bring ourselves out of our thoughts into this present moment. And this is something no one needs to know you're doing it. It could happen pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I love this one. And whenever we share it with students, they really like it. I've used this with students who are really anxious in my office and it's, it does miracles. I've used it when I've really had a difficult time. So let's add on to it. In Buddhism, in Buddhist psychology, it's really about sensing your, ten, your senses, but then they add on the fifth sense in this, or the sixth sense, I should say. Yeah, sixth sense. My mind's a little scattered, just like all of you. <laughs> um, and it's emotion. We all are feeling emotions. And so I want you all right now to look at this chart. And I'm going to give you a moment to look at it and stop talking. And I want you to recognize, and if you have a pen and paper, maybe write down how you're feeling right now in this moment. For some of you, maybe you're using the, the um, looking at the high energy, low energy, low pleasantness and high pleasantness and plotting your, your mood based on that. Maybe some of you are gravitated towards colors. 
Maybe some of you are reading the words. There's no right or wrong way to plot your mood. And what you may, some of you, notice if we were in a room and you know, usually someone will ask me, do I just have to choose one? And that's such an interesting question because we can feel many things at the same time. And so for this exercise, I want you to see if you could find your predominant emotion. And there we see the word high energy, energy again. Stress and taking care of ourselves is so much about energy and pleasantness. Do you feel low pleasantness or high pleasantness? One of the best things you all could do to enhance your emotional awareness is to start building your emotional vocabulary. And I don't know about you, but I wasn't really taught an emotional vocabulary growing up. And I'd say I'm still learning it, even doing this work for a long time and doing this work with other people. That I think sometimes we tend to have um, a very limited vocabulary. I'm fine, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm annoyed, I'm frustrated. Those are usually the words I hear from students. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of people say they're bored. And so I encourage you all to take this mood meter. It's going to be on the resources that we send out to you after this and print it out, put it on your refrigerator, share it with your family. If you have kids, start now teaching them their mood states. I sometimes do this with my partner, like, okay, how are you feeling? <laughs> sometimes too, it's hard to tell how people are feeling. And so this could be a really good way for you to gain a little bit of emotional insight to the people around you. And then that can help us respond to people. So it's not just using it for ourselves, but also being emotionally intelligent to how we respond to other people. And then that builds our social intelligence. But let me take a moment um, to tell you about these four colors. I'm not going to spend too much time, but I think it's important. Those of you who are in the red box, this high energy, these are usually what we would consider unpleasant emotions. That's why they're red, they're anxious, they're anger, they're um, fear. This is also where passion lives. A lot of passion can come out of this way. And usually if you're in the red box, you're that hyper alert. And you're really focused and you may have a surge of energy in your body and your heart racing. So again, we see that it's not just about having a mood, it's about experiencing it in our body. We move down to the blue. This is our low mood. Many of us are experiencing a low mood, sadness, depression lives here. This is where we're tending to look inward a little bit more, feeling a sense of loss, maybe a sense of failure. Our energy is low and our pleasantness is low. We're pessimistic. We need to be really gentle with ourselves in both the red and the blue area, but especially the blue area. The yellow, for those of you in the yellow, this is high pleasantness, high energy feelings. You're feeling positive. And yeah, there is a lot for a lot of us to feel positive about. And so savor that moment. Maybe you've met a goal. Maybe you're anticipating something. Maybe something joyful happened this weekend or this morning that you're still carrying with you. It's okay to feel joy in this moment. And after this moment too, I think sometimes we just breeze past joyful moments. Recognizing and pausing our joyful moments are just as important to recognizing our challenges. And then when we go down to the green box, these are really high, pleasant, low energy feelings. Something has occurred that's maybe making us feel a little bit calm, chill, restful, um, really in the present moment. And we feel that, you know, there's not many problems that need to be solved right now because we're living in the moment. And so Mood Meters from Yale University, they have an app you all could download to and all that will be on the handout that we'll send out afterwards. And so I want you, when you do the grounding exercises, also tap into how do you feel? And how does that emotion feel in your body? So we're connecting your body and your emotions. And that brings us to our next practice. We're gonna do a two minute body awareness um, meditation. And so let's just get started. I don't feel like I don't need to tell you too much about it because let's just do it. This will bring us into our present moment. It's gonna drop our attention into our body. And so let's get into our meditation stance. <laughs> so sitting, if you're sitting, finding that balance between openness in the front of your body and alertness in your back. If you're laying down, just letting your body fully relax into the floor. And let's just take a moment once again, to notice our body sitting.
Notice your body breathing. Starting at the bottom of your body, your feet, letting your feet relax, your toes, your ankles. Letting your shins relax, your calves, your knees, your thighs. And can you let the backside of your body melt a little bit more into the chair? Yeah, release some of that tension your backside's holding. Maybe you notice when you do that, that other areas of your body relaxed. Noticing your pelvis. Your lower back. Bringing ease to your lower back, your mid back, your upper back. If you send your attention there, can you let any of the ten if you send your attention there, can you let any of the tension melt away? You turn towards what hurts so that it can dissolve. Noticing your belly. Maybe you notice as it rises and falls with every breath. Noticing your chest and your heart. Can you let your shoulders relax away from your ears, creating space? Dipping your chin a little, relaxing your tongue in your mouth, relaxing the muscles in your face, and relaxing your eyes in their sockets. Ah, there you go. Knowing your breathing and knowing your sitting. If your eyes were closed, you can open them. Um, the body scan we could do quickly like that in two minutes, or we could really make longer and spend really intentional time with each foot, each leg. This is a really good one. If you all, good practice, if you all are having a hard time sleeping at night, lay on your back and do a body scan. You could find these meditations on YouTube, all over the place, on the health and wellness website. We actually have this a med longer version of this meditation that you can download. So connecting with our body helps us get away, create that space between our thoughts and our response. So the next one, there's so much good research about um, connecting with nature, how nature really relieves tension, stress, worry. Um, going out for walks is a great way to care for yourself, even situating your desk or your space wherever you are now. So you can look out a window. There's research that shows looking out a window could elicit our relaxation response. There's research that shows even looking at photos, relaxing photos of nature, listening to the sounds of nature. Um, so much research that all of those can release tension and help us feel a little bit more calm. And so we do that by using our senses. We're always using our senses. We're listening, we're seeing, maybe we're walking, so we're feeling. But what we're gonna do today is, um, we're gonna use YouTube. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna queue up this video and I want you in that same meditation stance, feeling relaxed yet alert, your hands resting on your lap. I want you to really notice what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And we're gonna do this for two minutes. I'll meet you on the other side.
So there's, um, I don't know about you all, but uh, I could probably watch that much longer than two minutes. I found that I wanted to close my eyes, and so I did. I listened to what my body needed. I noticed when I closed my eyes, my shoulders dropped a little bit more. So even the sound of the water and the flutes, music can be really healing. There's so much research about music. <laughs> and so I encourage you all, when you're feeling a little bit in that stress response, go outside or else hop on YouTube. And maybe have something saved in your bookmarks that you could look at or go on your phone and look at images that you've taken in nature that remind you of good times or that are just give you a sense of awe. Those are really calming. I feel so calm right now. I almost don't want to go to the next slide. <laughs> but we're going to go to the next slide because our next slide is so important. And it's connecting with our breath. So see, I did it. I didn't even mean to do it. I just took a deep um, exhale. And so what happens when we get stressed, we remember that stress response is our breathing gets a little erratic. Maybe we hold our breath or maybe our breath gets really rapid. So our breath shows up in many ways, different ways for all of us. All of us. So we're going to use our breath now to do um, what's called square breathing. And what it does is it helps induce our relaxation response. It puts us into that other side, that cooling side of our nervous system. So the idea is we're gonna inhale for four seconds. We're gonna hold the inhale for four seconds. We're gonna exhale for four seconds and we're gonna hold it again. And we're gonna repeat that cycle for about two minutes. What I wanna say is for some of you, this may be really challenging. So if you can't do the four seconds, then notice your breathing. If you could only hold for two seconds, that's okay. We're practicing new things and things take practice. You may find that you're really into this and others of you may find your mind wandering and after one round, you are not paying attention to your breath. You're thinking about what you're gonna do at one o'clock. That's okay too. This is really mindfulness training and it's training because it is training. We're helping ourselves respond to things in a different way. And we're going to respond to life right now to cool our nervous system by bringing in a little bit of breath. So I have a visual we're going to use because I like visuals. So let's do this for two minutes and I'll meet you on the other side. So getting your stance, sit upright. <laughs> if you don't need to look at a visual and you could count and do this with your eyes closed. You could do that. If you find that after a while you want to close your eyes, listen to your body. So feet on the ground, hands on your lap, sitting up alert. Let's breathe.
So I'm not gonna tell you to stop breathing because you've been breathing this whole time. <laughs> it's the amazing thing about your breath. It's always with you no matter what, always nourishing you and giving you oxygen. So I realized that that video wasn't really four part breathing. So if any of you noticed that, I was with you. And if you didn't notice it, that was good. You were so focused on your breath. The idea is the same. We slow down our breathing. We inhale, we exhale. We create some space between each breath. And when we calm our body with our breath, we turn on that cool water. And sometimes the holding can turn on the hot water. And then we exhale or inhale after the hold that turns on the cool water, and then we get the warm water, that sweet spot in the middle. And that's the beautiful thing about breathing. So let's do our last one, and then I'm gonna see if we have um, Okay, gratitude. I feel like I keep saying this, but I'm gonna say it's so much research on gratitude. There's so much research about everything, but the science has really been incredible around how Gratitude can improve health and well-being. It can help us feel calm. And so even in this moment, you all could think about, um, let's do it. I want you all in this moment, if you have a pen and paper in front of you, I want you to write down three things you're grateful for. And if you don't have a pen and paper, I want you to think in your head three things you're grateful for right here, right now. So to have gratitude really, feel, to really feel the effects of gratitude, I would recommend that you all do this every day. You can do it when you wake up, you can do it when you go to bed at night, whatever time works for you. And if you can, write it down. There's something about writing things down that helps us process, process things a little bit differently, helps us see things from a different perspective. And I think gratitude right now is so important because even though we're all struggling in so many ways, <clears throat> excuse me, there's so many things that we could be grateful for. And so I want to end on that note and open it up for questions. Letting you know that I'm grateful for all of you for being part of the Wildcat community. Um, I consider you all part of my family, especially now. It's been pretty amazing seeing how our community comes together. And I've been truly humbled and honored and grateful to do these, um, these webinars with all of you. So in gratitude, let's open it up and see if we have any questions. And if not, I could share other little tidbits I've been holding on to. <laughs> So I see that um, Jennifer asks, what do you think is the best time of day to practice these? So I'm so grateful, Jennifer, you asked that because you get that question a lot, especially with people who are wanting to start a um, meditation practice. And, you know, wellness is personal. It's not one size fits all. And so I would encourage you to find a time that feels good for you. If you're a morning person, maybe that's the time. If you're the first person to get up in the morning, Kind of set your day with one of these practices. It's really about fitting it into your day when it works for you too. The other thing I want to say is that these practices are meant to um, happen when you need them. And so remember, it's like this little toolkit you're holding with you at all times that you could pull out gratitude, you could pull out a breathing exercise, you could do any of these things at any moment during the day. And so know that they don't need to always be so regimented. Use them when you need them. And know that it's okay to need things. It's okay to take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah, so then someone asked, can positive stressors like studying for an exam lead to a negative stressor if you have a constant anxiety over it? Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we could see then, and I think this is, yes, we could see how stress can manifest into anxiety and the more we worry the more we're unable to think clearly. And so what we want to do, and we tell students this often, is that when we think about exam, you connect the meaning behind the stress. Why is, remember that stress is what causes, stress usually occurs when something's at stake or something we care about. And so I encourage you, next time you're feeling a little bit stressed about an exam, connect with the meaning behind the stress, not the performance, not the expectation of, and the hope of getting an A, 
but what's the meaning? Why is this test so important to me? You're meeting yourself with a kind response. You're tapping into your value system. And when you do that, maybe you enhance a little motivation. And what I wanna say about that one too, and about studying for exams, and I'll say this about anything we do in our culture, we're a culture of go big or go home. You keep going until you're done. You never stop. <laughs> we're a culture of doing, doing, doing. The best thing you can do when you study for an exam is take breaks. Give yourself time to rest. Maybe you do what we call the 50-10 rule, where you work 50 minutes, you take 10 seconds. You, you work 50 minutes, you take 10 minutes off. Maybe you take a whole day off. Make sure you get to sleep. And so part of performance, not just in the classroom, but any type of performance, is we need to take care of our whole well-being and be on our own side. Don't work against your body or yourself. And yeah, when you feel yourself getting anxious, try some of those deep breathing techniques. Get up and move. That will get you out of your head and into your body and into the present moment. So um, those are the only questions we have. So let me um, go back to my slides. We didn't have time for this, but I encourage you after we're all done is that you get up and move. I'm going to get up and move. I'm probably going to do a few yoga stretches, believe it or not. I've been sitting a long time. This really helps us tap into our nervous system. It releases tension in our connective tissues. It rebalances our body. I'm even stretching right now because I feel just looking at the slide, I need to move. Um, and I'm hearing so many of us saying we're sitting a lot. And so remember to move your body. Be friends with your body, move it, nurture it. And you don't need to be in shape to do this. You don't need special props. Um, and then let's end on this. What are you taking with you? And then we'll call it a day. So if you wouldn't mind putting that in the chat box for me. What are you taking with you after today as a result of today? Lots of good tools. Yes, Jennifer. I told you I could take longer than an hour. <laughs> yeah, you love the 54321. Me too. So easy. More body and mind. Yes, quick ways to take breaks. Time out to breathe. Yeah, be intentional. Yeah, intention is so important right now. Intention, routine. Yeah, gratitude. Yeah, gratitude journal. Yes, you're awesome, Jennifer. You love the breathing techniques. Me too. Yeah, yeah, Zach. We need to get away from this dichotomy of things being good or bad. When we have that limited um, mental view of seeing things, it can really narrow our vision of how we care for ourselves and how we see things. It changes our perspective. Yeah, stress isn't always bad. Yeah, go to your place of relaxation. Yeah, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, Celeste. <laughs> Celeste, you just made my day. <laughs> Focusing on my mood vocabulary. Yes, Mia. Yes, yes, yes. Five, four, three, two, one. All of it. Yes. Um, having tools for dealing with stress. Yeah, you all have tools. Um, if you all were, if I were to ask you all what tools you were using, and I should maybe add that to my next webinar. You all have tools too, so think about maybe journal. What are the ways you like taking care of yourself or you find help soothe you? When students come to see us for wellness coaching, they often want me to help give them a handout of how they can cope with stress. It's not my style. I start with, well, what are you already doing? And what do you like doing? And what have you done in the past that's hope you, helped you cope with stress? We start with what we know and we go out from there. Um, the other thing I didn't say, and I'm still reading your responses too, um, <laughs> is that when you all think about soothing and relaxing, and actually I talk with my hands, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I want you all to see me. Ah! Um, <laughs> I usually don't wear this bright a color, um, but I wanted to for you all. Um, usually I wear black and white. So when you all think about soothing, I want you to think about soothing, not be like, I'm stressed and I need to go from here to here. Sometimes soothing is we're, 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 we're stressed and I do one of these practices and I go from here to here. That is a sense of relief. And so getting a little bit more realistic with ourselves about what relief looks like, what relief feels like, it's not about perfection. It's not about going from A to Z. It's not about starting at one side of the road and going to the end. It's about 
taking these steps. And that's really what wellness is too. It's about taking steps every single day. So you all getting out of bed today and coming here, that was a step. So that's all I have. I mean, I could talk to you all day, but I won't. Um, if you have questions after this, feel free to email me. So Dawn Zitney at UNH Health and Wellness. Um, if any of you are feeling stressed and you feel like you need more and you don't work at UNH, or maybe you do work at UNH, call your EAP line, your employee assistance line. I've used it before. Um, it's okay to ask for help. Those of you who are on campus and maybe your students, we're still seeing students via telehealth. I'm seeing students for wellness coaching right now via telehealth. Psychological and counseling services is available. Um, and if you're feeling like you need a little extra help but you don't know where to go, I want you to email me. We'll figure out what would help you and where you need to be. So I definitely want you to know that after our time together, I'm here to help you as best I can. And maybe I'll see some of your faces on one of our other webinars. Even if you want to do this one again, you could do it again. I feel like every time I myself do this, I learn something about myself and I learn something new. So with that, thank you and gratitude. I wish you all may well be healthy, happy, at ease, and safe.